I'm always blessed. I, every time I wake up, I, I know that I'm blessed. It's one of those things where, like I said, I was trying to do that niche market. GPS, white glove, service. You may not want your brand new Lamborghini inside of a trailer that hauls four or three or two cars. So I want you to pick my car up and get it straight to my house. Do you have the option to go to the cheaper guy? Not a problem. But this is what I get you. If you want to do this, you, you just got to stick with it. You're going to have naysayers that's going to bring you down, but I think you can do it. You know what I mean? And a lot of people ask me, would I do it over again? Sacrifice a whole another 10, 11 years? And honestly, yeah, I would. Like, this is the best thing ever. What's up, y'all? I'm Rashad with High End Halls, and you're now watching Truck and Hustle. Hustle fam, hustle fam, we are back with another amazing episode. And today we have an extremely special and amazing show as always. I have Mr. Rashad Whitehead, the CEO, the president, founder of High End Halls, the auto luxury car hauling company. Specialist. <laughs> Specialist. That's it. That's it. Specialist in the building. Rashad, what's good, my brother? What's going on, brother? How are you? Man, so I've been trying to get you on the show for a minute, but you've been a busy man hauling yeah. these luxury automobiles all over the country, man. Good it's man. hard It's hard to get you still. Exactly. You know? Exactly. But that's a good hey, thing. I, I found that niche, brother. You know, transporting exotic, high-end cars, next day, overnight, white glove service, GPS tracking. You know, it's a, it's a demand. That that's you, a fact. That you wouldn't think that would be out there. That's you know? a fact. Being busy is a is, is a good thing these days, man. It's exactly. a lot of people who aren't busy looking for something to exactly. do, right? Exactly. All right. So let, let, let's get into it. Obviously, we're going to get into the backstory. We're going to talk about these exotics that you're hauling. Okay. We're going to talk about your business, how you got started. How many exotics do you own, man? Uh, I only got one now. I you got, got one? Yeah. My, my first supercar. What you, what you got? 2008 Audi uh, R8. Okay. It's not the V10, but it's a it's a V8. You okay. Know? It's not manual, but it's my baby. You know, I'm, I'm very proud of it. I could imagine, you know, being around all those exotic cars, man. Exactly. You got you got to get the itch, right? Got to. You know, so you got to pick one up. That's why I asked that. All right, cool. Well, let's get into this business, man. Auto transport is something that a lot of people are interested in. Super dope niche, right? It's a very skilled niche, right? Right, you got to know how to load them cars, right? right? Is and 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 I'm and from what I hear, it's a pretty profitable niche as well. It is. It so is. let let's talk about it, man. First, let's get into your story. Um, where are you from, man? I'm from a little small town uh, called Red Oak, Virginia, which is a lot of people don't know about it. If you've heard of uh, Lynchburg, Virginia, or Richmond, Virginia, it's like south uh, southwest of that it's in the country. So. Originally from there. What's the population? Like 10,000 people? Probably like 5,000. Like 5,000 people? You got to go 45 minutes to get to a Walmart. Okay. That's, that's how far. That's country. That's, that's country. country. That's country. It's like an hour and a half bus ride to get to school type deal. Oh, man. Yeah. So so talk, how was it growing up, man? Talk about that. Um, Growing up wasn't bad. You know, uh, actually, my sister's uh, prior military. Uh, went to live with her in Italy for two or three years and then... Traveled with her, and then pretty much I went back to air, lived with my mom and dad. I'm pretty much one of those mistake babies. Not mistake <laughs> babies in a sense. Both parents are both uh, 76 years old, so okay. I got a brother that's 55, another brother 54, another sister that's 53, another sister that's 50. So I'm the youngest. I'm 35. Got it. And we just raised up one of those families that, you know, just go get it. You know, it's, it's money out here. And uh, pretty much, you know, good childhood, nothing like, nothing crazy, but I was all about my money, going to church every Sunday with mom and uh, pretty much just trying to work, wash people's cars and stuff like that. I, I love cars, so pretty much washing cars and trying to make some extra money. Mom wouldn't want me, want me to work at Walmart, so, <laughs> so pretty much I was just doing that and... Uh, I went to uh, move to Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. Pushing wheelchairs at the airport. Paid my own way through school. Was, when, when was this? How old were you when you moved to Raleigh? Uh, I was 17, seventeen. Okay. Yep. Got it. So, so right out of high school. Right out of high school. You yep. Moved to Raleigh. Who was in Raleigh? Nobody. Nobody. I mean, it's the it's like an hour and a half drive. Okay, so it's not so far. Not too far. So you were on your own. Correct. All right. Yep. Moved that's out that there. was that's pretty interesting. Just trying to make it. Yeah. Um, my sister co-signed for my apartment for me. Because, of course, I ain't have no credit, just trying to get into that big world. So Raleigh was a good area, you know. Um, I pushed wheelchairs through the airport, did that for about two years. Uh, I bought my first house in Wake Forest, North Carolina. 
And as soon as I closed on that, you know, I went to ECPI. It's a little small technical school. It doesn't have to have names nowadays. You don't have, you have to have a degree to do anything nowadays to make money. Right. So <laughs> went to ECPI, um, got associates in that. And, you know, I was just one of those ones. I was, I'm always blessed. I, every time I wake up, I, I know that I'm blessed. But um, pretty much I applied for Lockheed Martin, number one defensive contracting company in the world. Didn't think I was going to get the job. Next thing you know, um, they hired me, 95% travel. Mm. I just closed on my house, and pretty much I just bought it, so I can't really sell it right away. So decided to make it a um, a, uh, a business. Made so that, were you like an engineer? Uh, the Pretty much as a telecom engineer. Okay. In a sense. So pretty much new installations. We ran telecom cables. Cat five, cat six, uh, fiber optics, terminate, no stuff like that. Got it. On different military bases. Got it. So went to Japan, stuff like that. So, so I made that a business. So that became my last name, Whitehead Properties. So, just trying to do it. So you're like a contractor. Like well, when you say you made it a business. Well, made the house because I turned that into a business, making it Whitehead Properties and becoming. Oh, first rental. you made the house into a business. So Correct. you were working for Lockheed, but right. you made your house a, a rental property. Right. Got it. Because I always knew in my mind, I can't work here forever. You know what I mean? Got it. The job was great. It was, I mean, here I am 20 years old, making close to $100,000 a year, traveling the world, uh, Japan, single, uh, Singapore, stuff like that. Very grateful, but it was just one of those ones that I'm making somebody else money. Mm. So- that's when it came on over to, I'm going to still keep doing this, but I'm going to try off with big trucks. Okay. So I bought my first 18-wheeler. Why, why trucks to begin with? Why, why trucks? Why that transition, yeah. Uh, because my father's in trucks and my two older brothers in trucks. Okay. They all, ha all have their own trucking business. And of course, they're going to tell me not to get into it. It's a headache. <laughs> you don't want to do it. But so I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. All right. Um, don't have no wife, no kids. Uh, let's let's make some money instead of stock market. Let's try something different. Got it. So tried the big truck, and I mean, I I, I can say when he's right. My dad was like, "Yeah, I told you not to get into it." First <laughs> truck, it was hard to find a driver. Second truck was breaking down left and right. Third truck, and it was it was crazy. Got it. So you bought a truck. Were you were you driving initially your own truck, or you were? I don't even have a class A. You don't have a class A at this class, point. Yeah, I don't have a class A. Right now? At all. You don't drive? I don't drive. Oh, okay. Spoiler alert. I, all hope, right. I hope that don't mess up, you know? <laughs> I hope that don't mess me Spoiler up. Spoiler alert. Know. Oh, he doesn't drive. Okay. Yeah. Let's get into it. All yeah. right. So you 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 start purchasing trucks, and you said it was a, a tough business. What are you doing? Like general freight? Yeah, general flatbed. Uh, where are you getting the, like, what contracts do you have? Where are you getting loads from? I was to a from? company, uh, Louisiana Pacific. All right. All this, you know, when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, you see the uh, the wood with the triangles on it. Yeah. So pretty much, yeah, getting loads from there. It was actually a company my brother had told me about. Okay. And he got me on with them. So I was getting, um, I was getting my freight from there. It was going good. He actually introduced me to my first driver, which he turned out good, but the truck was messing up on me. So I had to get another truck. So I hired another driver for that. And then drivers, they don't really care about your equipment. So he got going for the first three weeks, never checked the oil or fuel, I mean, uh, oil or, or coolant, the truck blows up on me. Mm. So with that driver being out of a job, he don't care. He's just going to the next one to make another guy's, uh, another business owner a headache. You know right. What I mean? Now are these new trucks that you're getting or are you no, getting older used. trucks? No, they, they getting used, used trucks. trucks. International, ProStar. Um, I like a lot of Freightliner classics, stuff okay. like that. So. Now, but how much money did you start out with to invest to start your trucking company? Uh, honestly, I would say it was like 20 grand for the first truck. My dad, you know, helped me out with the $15,000 flatbed trailer. Okay. So the biggest thing, it was probably about, say, 35 grand total to get the equipment. But that's not including the, the tarps the all the stuff that you need to get going not including your tires that's going to obviously you know go out on you um so pretty much you you need a good amount of money to really get it going gotcha you. you think that you know when you got money in savings that savings eats right through it so either you got a line of credit or you got a credit card that can really help you because 
when you robbing Peter to pay Paul, I don't know if y'all know <laughs> what that means, but it sucks. Yeah, it does. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So you built, you built up to three three semis, three trucks? I built up to th- four trucks. Four, four trucks. trucks. Yep. Okay. Built up to four trucks. Um, still hauling for this company. Still hauling for, uh, you know, Louisiana Pacific. Yep. And uh, pretty much it was just, it was just eating me alive. It was just like, I can't do this. And obviously I'm not driving. I'm doing the... Um, I'm doing the uh, contracting work. Yeah. And I'm in Japan trying to deal with a driver that's broke down. And it's just like, yeah, I could have somebody here that was, you know, to to manage it. But then that's another set of income that I got to pay out, you know. Were you making really any making. money or were you just taking like your job money and just dumping it into this Pretty business? much. I was taking the contract money and dumping into the big truck business. Yeah. So I had to I had to part ways with that. So. Okay. How, how did you dissolve that? Pretty much, I was selling, you know, big trucks. One motor had went out, selling the trailers. And then um, when you got big trucks, and especially if you think that you're running the business and you're doing good, you feel like, hey, man, I got to go buy me a pickup truck. So I bought me an F-350 Dually, 2009. And um, I was like, okay, you know, I got a truck. I got to haul tires, which I really wasn't hauling tires. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So... Um, Pretty much, I took the truck, and I was trying to find somebody. I always saw car haulers going up and down the road, 95, 85. So I was like, it's got to be some money into it. Got to be. So I looked up uh, Kaufman Trailers out of uh, North Carolina. Okay. Uh, went and bought a trailer. I had the money to go buy or purchase a trailer. Um, so at this point, you don't have any other tra- trucks. So you just went to, you got rid of the trucks, and now you're going to buy a trailer. Going to buy a trailer. All right. how, much, how much the trailer yeah. cost you? Trailer was... Twenty twenty three thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Got you. So it was a three car uh, wedge with the pop out would make it a four car. So I bought that. And the F three fifty. F three fifty. Now mind you, I don't plan on driving this truck. So <laughs> I'm uh I'm on Indeed Craigslist trying to find a driver. Hey, does anybody know about the car hauling business? Please let me know. So actually, one guy hits me up. His name is Everett. He uh he's like, yo, I, I did the business before. And uh, I can teach you everything you need to know. Okay. I didn't know all that was in de- de- detailed about it. So you got central dispatch. You got the different kind of stuff, the different kind of cars you get, what kind of brokers you're getting into and all that. So he taught me pretty much everything I needed to know. And okay. he was going to drive the truck. Did he charge you? Well, he was driving the truck, not, not to charge me. To teach you. To teach me. But more or less to get a job, to get a job, and right. him, you know, show me all the stuff I needed to do. Got it. So we did that for about a good six months to a year. But he's from New York, and he really liked that lane of New York to Florida, getting three cars with Mannheim, Copart, whatever it may be. And I was like, you know what? I'm sitting here in I think I was in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, at a military f- uh, installation, and um, I'm like, let me just look at Central Dispatch and see. Because he's dropping off in Florida. Let me see if I can help find something. Mm-hmm. And um, so there was something going, like three cars going to Ohio. And I told him about it. He's like, yeah, I don't really do that right. And I was like, well, that's like seven grand right there going to Ohio. You can put on the trailer. No, nah, I'm going to just go back to New York empty. So I was like, no, nah, that's not going to work. You know what <laughs> I mean? I, you making money every week and I'm not. Right, so right. We're going to have to do a change up. So I was like, yeah, I appreciate you, but we're going to have to part ways. This, this ain't going to work. So the truck just sitting there, and uh, I don't know what happened with, uh, I think it, with Lockheed Martin, I kind of, I already knew that it was like, it was coming to an end. Mm-hmm. One day, I remember it was like, it was yesterday, sitting in Alpharetta at this, um, at this job site, uh, one of the managers came in. He was like, hey, y'all go take break. Okay, cool. And uh, he's like, yeah, don't be late uh, coming back, or I'm going to write you up. And it just hit me. It's like, I'm a grown man. <laughs> when you're going to sit there and come write me up for being late. You know what? I'm going to put my two weeks in. I'm done. Yeah. And that was it. So I had a truck. Didn't have much savings left because I sunk it all into the big trucks. And then now trying to get more money back from the, the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? From the contracting. Yeah. So now I'm just, I got to rebuild. So what do we do? Go back to mom's house, mom okay. and pop's house. Okay. You know, got to go back to the country, rethink, rebuild what we're going to do. A buddy, um, he tracks his uh, Porsche uh, 911. His name is Troy. And um, I was like, Troy, can I use your one car trait? Let me just try this enclosed because Central Dispatch has an enclosed side and an open side. Okay. So can I use your trailer? So I use the trailer, I click on 
Central Dispatch. It was from Raleigh, North Carolina to Atlanta. First car I've ever moved, ever. And it was paying like 700 bucks. Now, back then, when I did it 10, 11 years ago, fuel was a little bit better and stuff like that. But it was like an old Model A car. Mm -hmm. And pretty much that's how I got started with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, got it. And that's still with the with the with the F three fifty. That's still with the F three fifty. Got it. Okay. So you get started and you said that's like ten years ago. That's like 10, 11 years ago. All right. Okay. So tell me how the business begins to grow. Kind of get into that story. All right. So uh business is, is I'm out here in Walmart parking lots crying, trying to get fuel. <laughs> I think you said it once before, uh like with C O D the the rates is just it's crazy low. Um, so I got to get a COD car to deposit that check just to get $200 for fuel to get me to the next run. So it was hard, you know, but I pushed through it, asked my mom for money, my sister, and they give what they can. And pretty much it was just one of those ones, like, I was sitting there thinking, like, okay, am I the only one that's going through this? Like, it, it, I can't be the only one that's sitting here Broke as I don't know what. Don't know how I'm going to take care of fuel, insurance, this truck payment. Don't want the repo man coming. So I got to keep doing it. So I just hustled, hustled, kept doing it. And I would say, and I had this millionaire mentor that talked to me, and he was like, um, this is your baby. And it's going to be a good eight to ten years before you actually start seeing black. It's going to be red for a while. And mm. I'm thinking, like, come on now. I'm moving Ferraris and stuff, or trying to move Ferraris. So I'm moving your R8s and stuff like you see on Central Dispatch. But um, I was like, it's gotta be better than this. So I just kept hustling, hustling, not thinking that I was gonna be able to make it work with a one car enclose. So, you know, just like, you just always gotta be professional and, and meeting your clientele. And a lot of people do the game for Central Dispatch, get a car, get paid, and go on about their business. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep that client like do what I can to make sure that he calls me back. Mm. Not trying to burn any bridges with uh, brokers or anything, but pretty much, hey, Miss Johnson, um, I appreciate your business. Uh, do you use you know some broker? Do you use them often? No, not really. Okay, well here's my card. You know mm. what I mean? Because you don't want to burn your bridges with a broker or whatnot. But I was just trying to get to the get straight to the source. Like use me direct, and um. Pretty much, I just, I just. You just dug yourself out yeah. the hole. So how, how long did it take you before you started kind of like actually seeing, seeing some money? Yeah, you, you got out the red. Uh, I would say probably about four years ago. Four, about four years. Four years, yeah. And you said the whole journey has been about 10, 11 years. Yeah. So it took you about six years. Yeah, everybody's different. But what I found my secret was. I want to be a team player in a sense of I got seven owner operators right now and pretty much me not having to worry about putting a driver in my truck that don't care about my truck or that, you know, just worried about a paycheck. Why not give that responsibility to somebody who owns their own truck? Mm. So pretty much I came up with the idea of having, I got seven trailers. So anybody, any of my drivers that don't have trailers, they rent a trailer from me. And also, I get a percentage off of their off of the runs that I give them. Got it. All right. So, at what point did you come up with that business model? Because that's not how you got into the business at all, right? Right. So, what happened in order for you to say, you know what? I feel like I'm hustling backwards a little bit. Let me change up the way I do things. Yeah. What was that moment that made you kind of switch up the way you were, were making it happen? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Uh, it had to be whenever I was, when I, pretty much when I was feeling like I was going backwards. Like, I was just, I was hustling and hustling and it just seemed like it, I won't make it anything. What's like, what were you making like a week, like weekly? Do you remember back then? Um, It could be making like four or five grand. But four or five, what are you bringing home out of that four or five grand? Uh, all after expenses yeah. and insurance, everything, you're looking at it easily. $800, if that. Got it. I mean? and, at, and at this time, you're getting all your loads off of Central Dispatch? That's when I was getting my loads off of Central. At, but, at that point? Yeah. Okay. But now, like four, like when I said four years ago, that was, I was done with Central. I closed the Central down and all of its repeat word of mouth, Instagram marketing, 
And um, crazy story, real quick. Um, I rented a Lambo for a while. I did a, a transport for a guy in Miami, Lamborghini Huracan. And uh, pretty much I just talked to him. I was like, hey, what would you charge me to rent this? And of course, you know, all the cars, the exotic cars there here in Atlanta, I mean, Miami. What would you charge me to let me put this on my trailer, take it back to Atlanta, and take it to the Cars and Coffee? So pretty much uh, he was like, he gave me a price. I think it was $4,500. That was mm. like a Thursday night pickup, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, bring it back Monday. So I did that, and I was just trying to do something different. And pretty much I already had the um, my signs made up, which was my other business, which was RJ Lee Transport. That was before the high-end halls. Yeah. So I had the signs made up already, website and everything, slapped them on the car, rode around Atlanta all the way from Friday to Saturday, Sunday, um, just advertising the car. Just you know for marketing. I mean? Just marketing. Went to the Cars and Coffee. Well, let me tell you this. It's always the devil trying to work his way in. <laughs> of course. As soon as I unloaded the car, there was a flat, uh, there was a nail in the flat in the tire. Oh man. So, and of course, you know, you drive an exotic car, you can't go to nowhere that's gonna put a tire on. So luckily it's all in who you know. So I, I was able to get another tire or get that tire plugged. Um, but yeah, we went to Cars and Coffee. I had flyers all on the car. Cause uh, I was doing I was also working too with Ferrari of Atlanta moving their cars. Okay. And I had the Lambo park there. So, of course, going to car shows, a lot of the owners don't want kids or people coming to sit in their cars, touching them. It's a rental for me. I don't care. <laughs> so I had little kids. So I had the whole crowd coming over there. I got like seven to eight calls off of transports, off of uh, doing that car. And Cars and Coffee, that's like a, a, an event. I'm not familiar with it. Cars it's and Coffee is a big event that happens the first Saturday, Sunday of the month here in Atlanta. Charlotte, North Carolina, um, Raleigh, all over the place. Okay. Really. So basically you were there marketing and people obviously with exotic cars saw you. Yeah. And they. Well, not even exotic cars. It's just like people think that just because you cater to the exotic car world that you can't do classics. You can't. I'll put a Chevy uh, Aveo in there if it's paying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So people just, people feel that they they not, can't get the service because they have a, you know, their father's Bel Air that was not restored or something like that. But they get the same kind of treatment as a, a brand new $500,000 Lamborghini. You know what Got I mean? it. So so you said that everything kind of changed for you when you started going direct to the consumer, Correct. right? Kind of cutting out the the middleman. Right. So how, how did that, did that hurt you at all? Like once you left, because I'm sure you built a few relationships Right. But I mean, Central Dispatch, is that like the that's from what I understand, like the main place for all the all the lows. Right. It is. It is. So when you cut that out of your diet. Right. And no nothing's feeding you but your relationships. Did you take a hit at all? Right. All right, Hustle fam. I know you guys are enjoying this video, but I just wanted to take a moment to ask you to please like, share and subscribe. Now, let's get back to the video. Actually, not right. Not really. Pretty much it went up for me this way. So it's all the who you know. My boy, Mike Roth, that uh, he used to work at Ferrari of Atlanta as a service advisor. So he would come there. He was like, hey, Rashad, you know, I know you just kind of got into this car haul. You've been doing it for a couple of years, but come move some of our cheaper Ferraris in as a service, taking it back to Birmingham. Okay. So with Atlanta being pretty much middle of everything, we service, Ferrari of Atlanta services uh, Birmingham, uh, Mobile, Alabama, Destin, Florida, Sometimes Jacksonville, Florida, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, um, Savannah, Georgia. Everybody who has a Ferrari, it has to come back to Ferrari of Atlanta to get oil change, uh, flat tire, uh, any kind of service, cracked windshield, anything. Mm. So that became my niche right there. Got you. Just, just going, going to Savannah right now to pick up a Ferrari and get paid each way. You know what I mean? Got you. Now, at this point, you still have the three-car hauler? No, no. I have that one car. Uh, I bought a one-car Oh, you enclosed. did buy one. Sorry about that. Yeah, I bought a one-car enclosed after using my boy's Troy's trailer. And how many cars did that haul? It, my, I only hauled one. Oh, car. just one? One car at a time. One car at a time. Yeah. All right. So that was never like a handicap for you, like only being able to haul one car? Well, we go back to that Class A, you know what I mean? Trying to stay under that 26000 Because you had no choice. Right. I had to do what I had to do. So, <laughs> right. I with a dually with a one-car enclosed, and other people out there looking at me like, yo, how are you making any money 
doing a one car. Yeah, how are you making any money? Yeah, well, is it a volume game or is it a is it the st- style of car? Is it the relationship, the people that you know just like you, so they're paying you a decent wage? What what is it? it? It's one of those things where, like I said, I was trying to do that niche market: GPS, white glove service, and a lot of people. It just all depends on. You may not want your brand new Lamborghini inside of a trailer that hauls four or three or two cars. So I want you to pick my car up and get it straight to my house. And people are that type of person. You know so I mean? is is that how the marketing sounds? Is, is that like, how, how do you differentiate yourself, right? Because a typical car hauler, from my, my knowledge, hauls multiple cars at a time. Right. So how are you marketing yourself and saying, nah, I just haul one like and, and that's kind of how I is that what it is? Like pretty I'm gonna much. I'm gonna give your car special care. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And of course you have the option to go to the cheaper guy. Not a problem. But this is what I get you. You know what I mean? And pretty much I just let the cheaper guy do the biz do the work for me. Let him get your car, let it get dirty. And not not speaking bad on anybody else in their business. Yeah. You know what I mean? But here I am spending thirty thousand dollars for one car enclosed, decked out lights. I have a see through trailer. That's twenty five thousand dollars. So it's it's marketing and it's also taking care of your car because when you buy on a five hundred thousand dollar Lamborghini or a Ferrari, you don't want that pulled up. You don't want to you don't want to see it pull up, dirt uh, shifted cars inside and all that. And right. You know what I mean. Also, appearance goes a long way too. You can't. Be having your pants hanging off your butt, you can't, you know, you know what I'm saying, you feel me. People don't like that. You got you pull up to a mansion, you gotta come correct. Yeah. They put their pants on the same way you do, but this is the person that's signing that check for you. You yeah. know what I mean? So now now, how how much are you able to raise your rate in comparison to the competition when it comes to price? Because you're offering that exclusive kind of experience. Um, right now I'm pretty much at that. Three to six dollars a mile. Okay. Whereas compared still to still at one fifty two dollars a mile. That that's huge. To, yeah. Yeah. That's a big difference. It is, and it's it's like, and it's not being cocky, but I can get a call right now saying, "Hey, you know, uh, can you move my car to Miami for my my Rolls Royce Ghost to Miami for fifteen hundred bucks?" And it's no. You're looking at three thousand to thirty five hundred mm. because. Yeah, I could go on Central if I had Central, but sir, I'm coming down there. That's a 12-hour drive, and then I got to come back. So pretty much, it helps pays for my round trip cost. But you know, that's it. You you want? I can I can pick it up right now and have it to you in Miami by the night or in the morning. Got it. So do you have droughts when there are? Because I mean, these are like one customer. <laughs> you know, a piece is not a bunch of customers. It's like specific types of customers. How do you con- keep the flow of customers coming in? Honestly, it's it's the word of mouth, really. Okay. Word of mouth and marketing. So I have my Ferrari clientele, but all it takes is that one client to, um, to reach out to somebody that's in, you know, let's say Houston, Texas, that needs this Porsche move. And I'm the type of person, I can't answer all my DMs, but Instagram is a big part. Where a 12-year-old kid can message you, hey, I like what you're doing. I saw your truck and trailer pass by. It's cool. You got a nice truck. It takes me nothing but five seconds or so to message this kid back. Hey, man, I appreciate you following me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Because you never know. That kid might have an uncle that has a big car collection. <laughs> That's you know right. I mean? That's right. So being rude, like, hey, somebody call an accident or hit you up and want to know how to get into this business. I will let them know, first off, it's hard, but if you want to do it, if you want to do something where you're not doing a nine to five sitting behind a desk, try it. That's all you can do. Mm. It's it's just going to be hard for the first few years, but it might be different. But I'm just saying, letting you know what my struggle was. Got it. Who is your, your, your typical customer? What's the makeup of your typical customer? I'm going to assume you probably have a lot of, obviously they have money. Right. Right, but like, is it a lot of athletes? Is it a lot of doctors? Is it like, who do you find yourself delivering cars to most? It's a lot of, uh, you get a lot of different professions, I would say. Now, I'm not going to talk about any rappers or anything like that, but for the rappers, it's a show game for them. You know what I mean? What do you mean they, by a show they, game? They don't care what their car arrives in. They just want it. You <laughs> okay. know what I mean? So okay. if you're a rapper and you want it in Miami... They're going to find the cheapest way to get it on down there and 
load up around the corner type deal. They don't care how it arrives. Got it. Truck and Hustle family, I'm coming to you with an exclusive deal just for you. Call 800-991-6251 to get 10% off on your first purchase. Whereas you got Shaquille O'Neal, I got him. I did him as a client. He's cool. He pays. He likes, you know, that I'm running a business that caters to getting it done ASAP. Um, I got a lot of doctors, a lot of dermatologists, lawyers, um, CEOs. So I don't, I don't, uh, I don't judge on whatever. Right. But I go where the money's going. That's you right. Know what I mean, and believe it or not, you can get the a billionaire in here. It just depends on. That's how they stay rich. Hey, you know what? Here's a call. Here's a charge for three thousand dollars. Oh well, you know I, I got it shipped last last month for fifteen hundred. Can you do that? And it's like, no, I can't. You know, call that guy <laughs> that you did it for fifteen hundred. Right, you know? right, right. Now with these high end vehicles, I'm assuming that your insurance is pretty high, right? Yeah. How how much higher is your insurance than like the typical traditional trucking company? Um, it's pretty much about three thousand dollars per rig. Okay. So, so having seven rigs, but I, I have the 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 owner operators take care of that. So we're all in one big policy. Okay. So it's about three grand for That's a, a truck trailer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For truck and trailer. Truck trailer and them as a driver on the policy. Okay, got it. And that it, that covers cargo. That covers the car. Everything. Yeah. And how much coverage does that give you? Pretty much, I have two hundred fifty thousand cargo. Um, a million dollars liability. Okay. So you will get a client. And my, this is my thing. It's like, I'm not being cheap, but you got some, yeah, you got one car in the trailer, but you'll get a client. Hey, my, my Rolls Royce costs, my Rolls Royce Phantom costs 500,000. Can you up your policy? It's like, no, if I up my policy, <laughs> I'm only moving your car one time. And now I'm back to moving right. you know, all the cars. And if God forbid, when I have an accident, it's not totaling out the whole car, scratching the wheel, scratching the side, or something like that. But yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's something that your customers are looking at. They're looking <laughs> at your actual insurance policy. You have to send them all that over, and how does it, that work? It's, it's a select few okay. <clears throat> that will, you know, hey, I got your number from um, Mike at Ferrari. Uh, can you send over your insurance? They just want to be a little extra, but got it. I completely understand where they're coming from. Yeah, for sure. What what is? Can you give me an idea of a, of a time when you had like a nightmare transport or something crazy happen? Because I know business isn't always peaches and cream. So for somebody who's looking to get into this industry, give me an idea of something that when things didn't go as as planned, you ain't got to name no names. Like if it was Shaq's car or something, you ain't got to tell us. <laughs> no, it wasn't Shaq's car, but um, pretty much I got a uh, VIP client. Um, his name is Tay Sweat. He lives in Miami, and um, I've heard of him before. He's like on Instagram and all. Yeah, that. Is he's he big a on Instagram, singer or something like that. <clears throat> no, he's a big influencer. He does a lot of stocks and stuff like that, and he shows everybody how to do it. So, real good client. <clears throat> he decided now. He decided he wants to get the um, a nice exhaust for his Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, like a million dollar car, right? So we move it from his crib in Nashville to Miami. I mean, to uh, Los Angeles. Got the exhaust done. Then got it back to him in Miami. Then he wanted, he said he didn't like the sound of the exhaust and he wanted to ship it back to LA for another person to do the exhaust. Okay. So we did that. And this was uh, after Thanksgiving. So February, I can't think of the date, February 3rd or something like that. We get the call. We need to pick up the Ventador SVJ, bring it back to um, Miami. So pick up the car from Jatani, and we're on the way back. Uh, just had the truck detailed up, cleaned up everything, car strapped down good. We're coming through Albuquerque, and... All right, Hustle fam, I know you guys are enjoying this video, but I just wanted to take a moment to ask you to please like, share, and subscribe. Now let's get back to the video. Pretty much it's just snow just came, snow <laughs> ice came out of nowhere. Okay. So we're driving, and then we end up in a... Pretty much getting to Santa Rosa, New Mexico, ended up in like a forty car pileup. Oh man! Yeah. So I got twenty six inch wheels on my truck. My truck is lifted, and of course you're gonna have the people say, "Oh, well, you shouldn't be riding with wheels on your truck, and if you would have had stocks, this and that." So it's just, <laughs> so it's one of those ones like I was I was sliding into the back of this eighteen wheeler, and I just took it to the ditch. 
So luckily, a big truck behind me got caught up with another tracking trailer, and that kind of saved the car that was in the trailer. So we sitting in the ditch. Mm. The back axle had ripped from my truck. Oh, man. And Tay Sweats, Larry Gitty. Me and all the cars are sitting this in this side of the thing. So before <laughs> I got out, I'm sitting there like, please, please let this car be okay. Luckily, all the straps was good. It hadn't moved any. It wow. stayed good. And um, it was it was like a blessing. Like It was one of those ones where you got to be thankful for my business could have went under. Now, mind you, we was talking about the cargo insurance and all that. Yeah. But if a big truck would have came and just wiped that trailer out, I would have been done. Yeah. So I called him up while it's in the ditch. We waiting on people to come pull us out. He was like, dude, as long as you're okay. You know, he was chill as I don't know what. So got to a hotel and the trailer was fine enough to get it to Miami. Got you. So I had a, I, it's all the who you know too on Instagram, reached out, uh, anybody in the, in the uh, Santa Santa Rosa, New Mexico area. One guy, he was an Instagram fan. He was like, hey, I'm in Austin, Texas. I'll be there by the morning. <laughs> so he drove his Dodge Ram truck all the way to New Mexico, hooked up to the trailer. We're headed to Miami, and his alternator goes out of his truck. Oh, my goodness. So it's all on my YouTube channel. But <laughs> So it goes out. We go outside of the road again, and the place is about to close for the alternator. Two o'clock in the morning, we're still trying to put it on. And uh, we got it. Uh, we got it to Miami, all cleaned up and everything. Wow, wow, that's crazy. Now something like that happens, like all them days you don't lost, you don't make no money. <laughs> well, I don't. But at the same time, that's the good thing about the 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 seven owner operators I got. Like, okay, I got good guys. Um, pretty much, they they they. I just want to make a group of guys that we can all go make some money together and win. You know what I mean? Now, let me ask you, are all the owner-operators in F350s as well, or are they I got, semis? I got Chad that's in a Dodge 2500. I got Drew that's in a F350. Mike in an F350. Um, Matt, he's in an F450. So, so all non-CDL? Yeah. All non-CDL. Okay. Cool. So let let me let me ask you a question. How how do you find how do you start building that part of the business? Because you said earlier you said you buy the trailers and then you lease them out to those guys, right? Well, pretty much. Um, like Mike, he is a CDL um, holder. He is a CDL holder. He okay. had a three car wedge. Okay. And he hit me up on Instagram and we got to talking and he kind of wanted to branch off into this business. So he went out and bought a, a little wooden trailer. It's not ideal, but it gets the job done. So pretty much I'm giving him one of my trailers so he can, it's not like he loses business, but it's like we move a lot of stuff. Sorry to get off topic, but yeah, yeah. Velocity Restorations, we do a lot of their Broncos. This is like 250000 and up classic Broncos that we move. Okay. So we kind of, we're, we're, we're getting the, you know, four or five dollars a mile there. So we need to make sure that we pull up correct. We're not pulling up like, your central dispatch guys that are, you know what I mean? Trailers falling apart, truck is dirty, this and that. So we we like to cater to the customers as it's as if it's our own, you know what mm. I mean? But we're trying to make sure the velocity stays happy. Okay. So with the trailers, like he had a CDL and he we got him a, a trailer. Um, my other guy Matt, he got him a trailer. Chad went out and bought his own trailer. So pretty much that's it. So so basically the business model is you you contract the work direct right. and then you're able to allocate it to all your guys. Right. How are you able to keep everybody running consistently and happy? Nick, what is Fleet Drive 360? It's hard to put that into one sentence. The compliance process is so complex. So what Fleet Drive 360 does is it makes it simple. It gives you a process and a foundation that you can build on and it allows you to hire your drivers, onboard them quickly, maintain their compliance documents throughout the life of that driver or that vehicle. And it gives you one place to go when things get crazy, one place to go to find out the compliance status of your entire business. What it is, is that one-stop shop for all your compliance needs. It's all about how, like, I know the lanes. Like, uh, Matt, he has five kids. He's also building a house right now where you got Mike has two kids. You got Chad that has two kids. So pretty much I kind of find out what everybody got going on that week. Hey, you want to run to I – got, I got Matt right now. I'm about to head to um, New Mexico to pick up a Ford Bronco Raptor. Okay. And 
like it's been kind of slow in the past couple of weeks, but it's starting to pick back up. So it's just you just gotta find that that where everybody likes to go. You know what I mean? My my guy Drew, he uh, his girlfriend lives up in uh, New York, so he likes to run up that that area. You know what I mean? Even if it's not one that goes that area or it goes down to New Orleans or something, you know. Everybody has their own, their one. So I try to make sure everybody stay working. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you still driving? Yeah. Okay. Got it. So what, what is your, what is your main bread and butter? It's the Ferrari dealership, right? That's what you do. Ferrari, Atlanta and Velocity Restorations, the Broncos. Those are the mains. And then everything else would be like, like just people that you just connected with. Right. Right. Like. Do you do like I heard like the snowbirds and all that? Like, is, a, is that something? Is that something that you deal with or that, not really? Not really. Not yeah. really. So, if anything, you may get it to where um, we might get somebody that want to move their car down. If they see you drop it off in Myrtle Beach or something, hey, can I get your car? I want to move my Tesla down to Myrtle Beach. What do you charge? So they're looking for that snowbird rate that they could put it on a big enclose. But after hearing my price, it's, it's just like, you know what I mean? Gotcha. They want to go that route. So you're extremely, I mean, one thing I've heard throughout this interview is like, you're firm on your price, right? Yeah, um, you and got, and, you and rightfully so. Yeah, you got to you, you know, has there ever been a time where that has in, impacted you adversely or has that always worked for you just being firm on whatever your price is? And your price is significantly higher than most car haulers. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's worked out good. I was able to. Buy an Audi R8 cash, so, you know, and I don't That's mean, true. I, and I don't say that. No, 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 off, no, but for sure, yeah, you got to stick your stick to your guns. You know what I mean? Because if you sit there and lower your price one time, they're gonna get you the next time. They're gonna yeah. get you the following time. You know what I mean? All you got to do, like I had a guy um, in Alpharetta. Hey, Rashad, I need to take my Ferrari down to Naples, trade it in for my new Audi R8. How much do you charge? You're looking at thirty five hundred. Oh, okay. Well, you know, we're not getting quotes for twelve hundred, this and that. Okay. Well, you go ahead and you know, you don't want to be a smart a to them. You know what I mean? You just gotta kill them with kindness. Well, sir, I can't. I can't go with those prices. Fuel is high, inflation, insurance, all that. So, pretty much, this is my price. This is what it's gonna be. Oh, okay. Well, let's go ahead and do it. And when they say let's do it, that's when I know to get this client again to show him we how we kill it. Yeah. Got down there. We loaded up that night, got down there that morning and was back by uh, that evening for him to drive his R8. Got it. And then he was happy. That's it. So now he knows how to go ahead and tell his buddy that's in all the car clubs. You, you got to sell that value. Because you, you get a lot of people that, hey, man, well, you know, I move 10 to 12 cars a, a, a week, you know, a month. Uh, can you give me a deal this time? After your sixth car, then yeah, we can we can work on a deal. But right now, no. I need my money. You know what I mean? That's Got what, it. That's what it comes down to. No, nah, I love it. How, how many how many other people do what you do? Like are do you are there any other haulers that kind of operate like you that's out there that yeah. you know of? Yeah. And um, like how how does that work? Because I mean, are are do you guys have to compete on price at all or not really? Uh, in a sense, not really. You got you got guys that's in Texas. You got guys that's in Florida. So I, I don't know. And I'm not saying that I'm the one who started the one car enclosed, but you might be. It, it <laughs> might be. You never know. But it was one of those things. Like like yo, let's. And don't get me wrong. Our trucks still get stopped by DOT and all yeah. that. You know. But um, it's just one of those things. Like you just gotta know what you're doing and. I don't know what their prices are and I'm not going against, you know, I, I don't look at anybody as competition. You know yeah. what I mean? Just just go out here and do my thing. You know what I mean? Because you're going to get that client that's going to go with the, the, the more conservative transporter. Okay, that's fine. But that conservative transporter, I hate to say it, it's not going to be in business very long, you know? Right. And then they're going to end up, that client's going to end up coming back to me. Somebody that's still in business, you know? Yeah. Now, now in terms of compliance, because you're non-CDL, your guys can just run straight through, right? You can just pretty much... In a oh, sense, we're supposed to, but we can't. You but you I mean? can't. You still got to do the stick scale. You still got to do log and all that but stuff. But I'm talking about in terms of hours of service. Right. Well, you're supposed to shut down like an actual 18-wheeler. All right, guys, listen, before we continue the show, I got to give a shout out to our sponsor and our partner, 
OTR Solutions, formerly OTR Capital, but listen guys, OTR is much, much more than just a factoring company. They provide so many solutions to help the small carrier not only get into business, but to stay in business and maintain, right? So you guys have to partner with them and check them out. Don't take my advice for it. Talk to their clients, right? Talk to their clients. Find out what the people are saying. Everybody will tell you the same thing. So make sure you give OTR Solutions a call at 470-900-3338 or click the link in the bio below. Make sure you check them out and tell them Truck and Hustle sent you. Yeah. What's the most expensive car you ever hauled? Uh, it might have been... Might have been like a twenty two thousand twenty two million dollar Jaguar, like damn, British, like some. And the car don't even look like nothing, but it had all the wheels and restored and everything, and shipped it back to uh, Britain. Where did something like that come from? Like it came out like from a farm, country land out there in in Kentucky somewhere, and came back here to get on the airplane to go to um, to Britain. And do you remember how you got that customer? Uh, I don't know how I got it. Doing another job. Okay. Yeah, doing another job to the airport. And then they, they like the service and been using us ever since. Okay. So you, you keep on talking about the white glove service. What what are some of those things you do? Aside from obviously delivering the car, what are some other things you guys are doing to stand out, to make yourselves so special, man, that people pay all this money to work with you? Um, Like I said, his appearance is one big thing. You know what I mean? All of our guys pretty much keep our we keep our trucks clean, um, cause you see a lot of trucks on the road. It's just like they like to stay dirty. Yeah. And so keeping the trucks clean, like both of my trucks got twenty sixes on it, and that's not about showing off about how much money you're making this and that, but it's like this is my baby. This is my office that I I like to have nice nice things. Thirty thousand dollars each trailer. Um, so I'm pretty much reinvesting into the brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. And going as far as not buying Michael Jordan or Balenciaga and nothing like that, buying shirts and hoodies that I can brand myself because it's my business card. You know what I mean? Right. And pretty much just that's it. Just you know, just showing that white glove service, the GPS tracking, and a lot of a lot of people don't really like to show their location, you know what I mean? Cause they don't want people all on them, but it's just an easy thing. Hey, you know, Ramil, your, um, your Bentley has been loaded up. It's on the way. Here's the GPS tracking. So if you're out doing what you got to do, you know, when the, the trailer is pulling up with your car. Okay. Simple. Is that a, is that an app that they have to download or it's, how does that work? No, it's an app that I just send to your thing and it's a free app. Okay. You know what I mean, Got you. So, so they can watch the whole process of the car. They can just see the little little trail. Yep, I'll send pictures. And I go as far as, I hate to say it on, on actual, you know, on here, but it's actually just tricking the system. So I'll get inside of the trailer and I'll take a picture from above. And I'll be like, hey, you know, here's mid, mid transport. Here's a picture of your beautiful vehicle mid transport. Right. Oh, you have onboard cameras? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> of course we do. You know, anything to make them happy and feel like their car is right. being taken care of. Yeah, you know. That is hilarious. You got to. You when, just got to cater to them. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, so, so, and and you said most of the business is COD. Um, you got you got some like the Ferrari dealership. You got to send in a, you got to send the invoices, but it's all about. Uh, the lady Erin that works there, mm -hmm. she she has a sweet tooth for Reese's Buttercups. <laughs> I send them in every week. She cuts that check as soon as we deliver. You know what I mean? You hey, gotta send the buttercups. Hey, I, got, I got Zaxby's on you. you yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so what's a typical thir uh, turnaround for you to get paid? Uh, it's usually within a week, like seven days. Yeah. Okay. I try not to do anything 15, 30 days because being a small business, you need that money. You need that cash flow. You do. It's it's hard to wait. 50, and you think people on the outside looking, it's just like, it it baffles my mind that you can pull up, deliver a car. Hey, um, oh man, I don't have my checkbook on me. Uh, send me your address and I'll mail your check. I know what the mail system's <laughs> like. No, you're not finna mail me no check. Right. I'm going to wait right here. Right. It's, and you got it, you get it all the time. Got it, got it. So for those CO, COD customers, they just pay you cash straight up. 
Well, it's not always oh. cash. It's cash, credit card, PayPal. Okay. I, I take it all. EBT. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. There you go. No doubt. Yeah. Have you ever had a, a time when you got to a customer and they didn't have the money? Um. <coughs> excuse me. And they couldn't pay you. Has that ever happened? Never really anything like that. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. I will say on the open side, you know, and not talking about race or nothing, but I had to deal, um, I had to uh, check bounce me for $300. It was an African guy and delivered to him. And next thing you know, it just check bounce. $300, it bounced like it, a ball. It bounced, man. And, <laughs> and, and like when you so broke and you try, it, that $300 means a lot to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pulled up on this guy's house and I sat in the front of that yard. Like, you think I'm playing? That's $300. And, you know, people go buy J's with that. That's yeah. $300 that could go in the tank for the next run. That's a fact. It so is. you just waited for the money? How long How long until you get the he money? He tried to send me a credit card that wasn't working. and He just ain't have it. Yeah. I was just, well, hold I was on. Just, what kind of car did he have delivered? That he it was like a Toyota Corolla. Oh, yeah. okay. It was just one of those open cars. Well, we got love for Toyota Corollas. Yeah, I'm not complaining about yeah, Toyota Corolla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, it was like he had like little auto sales bills. In, bills yeah. And... Yeah, I was like, sir, you know your check balance. Oh, well, I I'll get it to you. Uh, no. Oh, so he was a dealership. Dealership, small dealership. How many of those do you deal with? Well, that was on the open side. What do you mean by the open side? Open car transport. Okay, yeah, the open, the, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But now, no, but what, what I'm saying is how many dealerships do you deal with, like where you're delivering their cars? You do that a lot too? You talking about now? Just period, just in general, because you saying that guy had a dealership? <laughs> Yeah, you know, like a small little auto sales business. Yeah, like so, some, yeah. like they got like a couple but like that's, used that's all, cars. You know, yeah, they they have their own central dispatch, so they can get you to. That's when I was doing a central dispatch, a little three hundred dollar car. It was a fuel car, what you would call it. You know okay, what I mean? something that pays for fuel, that helps with fuel. Where you got small Toyota Corolla on the front, and you got two vans on the back. That's your money makers. You know what I mean? Mm. So that's how that works. And yeah, so I sat out there and. The wife got scared and she came out. I need cash. I, yeah. Yeah. No checks. So she gave you your cash? Yeah. The wife took yeah. care of it. I took that $300 and I actually got it hanging on my wall right now. <laughs> $300. Don't give up. That's know? why it's important to have a strong woman behind you, fellas. They're going to take you that $300 yeah, when like, you can't hey, pay. Babe, this dude's serious. <laughs> yeah. Pay me. That is hilarious. All right. So. You got you got seven seven uh, guys that rock with you now. So it's eighty you guys in total. Yeah, seven plus you. Yep. Right. And uh, where where are you looking to grow the business? Like, what is the goal? What is the goal for high end halls? You just keep on signing on uh, owner operators. Uh, like, talk talk to me about that. Like, what's the quality control like? You know, tell me tell me what's, what's all, going on. And honestly, with that. like the guys that I have now, it's it's pretty much where I needed to be at. You know what I mean? Now, if one of them happens to fall off, then we have a place for, you know, if somebody hits me up on Instagram, hey, you need somebody to help you out, cool. That's 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 another option, but I'm trying to stay, I don't want to get too big, you know what I mean? Because even though they're owner operators, I feel like I'm responsible for making sure that their families eat at night, you know what I mean? Right. So making sure that everybody's taken care of uh, with runs and everything, that's my main goal. You know what I mean? And you're responsible for the your brand because yeah. the more people you hire, the potentially like a bad actor could kind of get into oh, yeah. your mix. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And and destroy what you've built. Yeah. You know what and I mean? Even, so you got to keep it tight. Even if I don't have the seven operators that's available, let's just say I deal with VSL Transport. They're here in Atlanta. They're a two-car transport. So I'll call them up. We got, we got um, Platinum Transport in Florida. I deal with my boy... Um, Marley, he has 10 trucks, 10 tow trucks, Okay. plus an uh, enclosed truck. He's a professional transport in Miami. So we just all kind of be a community and help each other out. Got it. You got Transport Tim that's out there, and he has an open car. He picked up a um, a pickup truck for me out there on Sacramento area and brought it, uh, brought it into Texas. So it's just all about getting on the phone and hitting up people to see, hey, let's make some money together. All right. Mm -hmm. Somebody who wants to do what you do there watching this video, because I know you give a ton of free game out on YouTube yeah. already, so you don't have a problem with doing this. Like, how, how would you advise them to get started? Because, I mean, it took you 10 years. 
six years to start figuring out and start making right. some money. Trying to see so it. it's a long road, right? It is. So how can you cut that in half for them? Like what what mistakes did you make that you could help them avoid that you would have that you if you could go back ten years, yeah. you would have did this sooner to get to where you're at today. Um, well, one of the biggest things, if you get out into it, um, try to build as much capital as possible because you may not have no breakdowns that first week and you got you about five or six bands, um, you know, stashed away, built up, and then you go buy some J's and then you go to the strip club that night or whatever it may be. Then that next week, Baron go out on the trailer. You may have a truck that has warranty, but... You know, something might go wrong, then your truck goes in the shop. Once your truck is down, that, that's a killer. So pretty much what I did was is I have my main truck, Brutus, that has eight, over 800,000 miles. It's a 2017. That's the name of the truck? Brutus? Brutus. Okay. I named Brutus. Got it. Uh, 800,000 miles. Um, it's a 2017 Ford F-350. And um, pretty much I had that truck. And then whenever that truck would go in the shop, those two or three weeks are critical for me that I'm not making money yet. Yeah, other guys are making money, but I want to make my own money. So I went and bought another truck, which is a 2021 Ford F450. Mm. So it's good to have a, a backup. But if you're getting into the game and you want to make it work, you got to stick to it. Because um, you're going to have people that be like, come on, man, that, that ain't working for you. Give up, this and that. And they just hate us. You know what I mean? Just yeah. push, that, push that nonsense to the side and... Go ahead and do it. You got to so, stick to it. So start with some money. What, what would you say would be that 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 safety net that you need? Um, if they got the truck already in trailer, well, let's just say a truck. It doesn't have to be a brand spanking 2023 with the bells and whistles. You could start off with a 2017, 2018. Um, something with, if you can get a used warranty, that's fine. But that's all you really need. Uh, you don't need a F350 or 450. I just like dually trucks. Um a 250 would do just fine if you're Dodge, 2500 will work. If you're doing a single car For transport sure. like I'm doing. Yeah. But I know a guy that had a Dodge 3500 single rear wheel that was doing a two car enclosed. So it, it just varies on whatever you're trying to do with it. You know what I mean? But I can't really speak on flatbed free because I don't really know that lane. Yeah. So I just stick with what I know. But um, pretty much just get out here and just try it. All you can do, like, I do. I try to separate myself where business cards is regular like this. I get postcards. Mm. So if you go, go to a dealership to where you want to get their business again, hey, here's a here's my business card. And it's an actual big postcard. So if they throw it in their desk drawer, that's the first thing that they'll see whenever they open it. You know right, what I mean? Right. So it's little small stuff like that. Um, also, I have keychains with the same logo right here that I put on thing. Um that I put on the key rings and just every little bit counts. You know what I mean? So. Do, do you advise people to start by going to a dealership? Like, or is that the best place to start at? Or is it more so like, you know, go find some customers? Like, what would you say to do is the, I mean, if, if it, let's say you have experience, you know how to haul, like you got all that damn right. pack, right? So obviously you want to learn how to safely haul right. the car and all right. that, right? But yeah, like what, what would you say is the best place to start to find your customer base and grow from? Uh, dealerships are good, but they always trying to find the lowest price people to move stuff anyways. You know what I mean? Right. So if you could just find, find that, that, that person or, you know, salesman or something that you can get in with to where if you're giving them kind of a, a transport deal, you know, you just got to start moving, just got to start moving cars and hope the next big thing comes up. You know what I mean? Like, um, Pretty much, it's all in who you know, what I told you about with my boy Mike. Yeah. So knowing him, and then he knows the person at um, Lamborghini Atlanta. So I moved a couple cars for them. They didn't really like my price points. But, <laughs> and with Ferrari, you know, you, you got that different brand. Lamborghini is for the young, showy rich. You got the upper echelons of the Ferrari. That's a brand where... You can't just go in and buy a brand new Ferrari. You know what I mean? You got to mm -hmm. be on a list. You have that to own so many. So I try to deal with that that kind of clientele. You know what I mean? Being presentable, doing what I got to do. Got it. So you said when you, you know, uh, six years ago, whatever, you were doing about, I think you said like six or 7,000 right. a week. Yeah. So 
in together with your whole crew around what do you guys bring in the week now? If you could share that. No, uh, all together, all trucks. Uh, it's around thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Yeah. That's a that's an actual number. So that's the real number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say a round number. He said around. <laughs> he said around thirty-eight. <laughs> so around thirty-eight a week. So what's the math on that? Fifty-two. What's that? Like what's that? What, like two million? Two million a year? Is it? Let me see, 38 a week, 50 times 52 weeks in a year? Like 1.82 2 million? Two and change? That's before, that's gross, that's before taxes. That's before taxes, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Nah, and it's important that you say that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody like them top line numbers. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, okay, so that's what's up. All right, cool, man. Very, very dope, very interested niche. I, I love it because, number one, you don't have to get the big truck. Everybody yeah. thinks car haul and they think automatically <laughs> you have to get the, uh, you know, the, the big semi truck. And right. you you found a way to do it without it. And then also, I like the fact that you got the one car niche, which yeah. is dope, but you charge a premium. Yeah. So it's extremely just totally different to what everybody else is doing. When you meet other when you when you run into other car haulers out there. That's looking around seven and nine cars. What's their response? How do they feel about you out there in these car hauling streets? Well, honestly, my setup doesn't even look like, our setups don't even look like, you know what I mean, a car hauling. They just, hey, are you going to the track? You going to the racetrack? Or uh, what you doing? So, you know, you got to- They think it. it's almost like a personal- Right, like you're it's just a personal taking your, setup. Taking your car. That's how all of our trucks are. Personal uh. setup look. Um, one car enclosed. We got the side escape door, so we don't have to crawl through the windows and stuff like that. So, we just got that niche to where we just look like we going to the to Daytona Bike Week or going to the track or whatever it may be. Yeah, it's not a plain Jane regular truck, you know. Yeah, nice clean trucks and trailers. You know? Nah, that's that's super dope. You said all all your trails are the um. The open ones, right? That's side escape open side doors. Side escape open doors. Yep. You like those. Yeah. You like those for the marketing? Well, it is. Because when you pull up and you're trying to if I'm six foot, I'm six foot four. So me trying to hop out of a Ferrari, sliding out the window, that don't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you, do you, right. you think about it? You got a client that's sitting there looking at you crawling out the window <laughs> like that. Hey, like, yo, it's is like, he gonna yo. get out? He, he gonna hurt himself trying to get out of there? <laughs> Scott could easily do it, but I can't do it. You know yeah, what I mean? So, yeah. um, so we just invested in well the side escape doors and pretty much the the trailer wheel down in Texas where I get most of my trailers from, in Tex, uh, Missions, Sundowners. But yeah, they. I mean, it's worth it at the end, long run because clients just love them. You pull up, you can actually open the door to the Ferrari, hop in, and back the trailer off. And how much do those trailers run? They are about thirty five thousand now, cause you know inflation. Yeah. But I, I, I was getting them at twenty seven, twenty eight. And they're brand new. Brand swinging new. Got one you. car trailers, and people thinking, why would you spend thirty over thirty thousand dollars for one car? Yeah. And I got a two car Featherlight that we use. We take to track events, and of course, you know, you got to have your C. They want you to have your CDL and. But we 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 go to Miami at midnight whenever everybody sleep type thing. You know I mean? <laughs> do, do you fi do you finance the trailer? Or you buy them, buy them cash. Uh, just buy them out, right? Just buy them out, right? Cool. When I when I first started out four years ago, or well, when I started buying the enclosed, I was financing them. But like I said, I just mostly like to reinvest into the brand. Yeah. Because for a slow week like this, well, I can't say it's a slow week. We got some runs coming up, but last week was kind of slow. Um, but the fact of knowing that I don't have a trailer payment coming up and mostly just insurance, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you, you're able to keep your overhead right. extremely low. Right. Let me see something. I just wanted to make sure I did my math right earlier. <laughs> yeah, 1.97. So yeah, about Ooh. 2 million. <laughs> I, I, I had to double check myself. <laughs> we, we, Much success to you, brother. Thank you, you. I appreciate what you're doing. Been watching you for a while, and I'm glad I was able to get on the show because I have been busy, but yeah. not as busy as you. You be flying in and out <laughs> and stuff. But I'm glad uh, we was able to link up. No doubt. We got to get you to Freight Fest, too, man, in, oh, yeah. in Houston. I saw that. I saw you you got to definitely be there. be there September 28th. 
Yep. Everybody's going to be there. We need your we need your knowledge in the building, man. Yeah, you definitely. know what I'm I'll saying? So we'll see you there. I'll be there. Um all right, well let's let's start rapping. So traditionally, you watch the show. You already know. Um we got to let everybody know where they can connect with you. All right. I I, I have a feeling you're going to get a lot of people who want to be a part of the team. Right. So let them know where they can like kind of do those inquiries if you are taking on anybody else. And then lastly, we got to get that final thought, man. Then we're going to get and get you up out of, out of here. All right. Sounds good. So pretty much you can reach me on my Instagram, which is High End Halls. And or I got a YouTube channel on there also. Um, that's High End Halls as well. So final thought is final if, thought. if you want to do this, you, you just got to stick with it. You're going to have naysayers that's going to bring you down, but I think you can do it. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of people are getting out of the business, but you can't do what everybody else do. If you if you believe that you can do it, you don't want to do that nine to five, and you want to do trucking, do it. Pretty much, I went from a you know a uh, hundred thousand dollar a year job doing something I love to do, which is uh, telecommunications, to doing becoming my own boss. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's it's and a lot of people ask me, would I do it over again? sacrifice a whole another 10 11 years and honestly yeah i would like this is the best thing ever wow you can't, you can't go wrong with you know trucking don't go with the flow be the flow man listen this has been a yeah. dope conversation with my man rashad look like you could be my brother or something like that man Mike's we skin, we you know we, we might be related we exactly. gotta check the 23 and me <laughs> you know what you know what I mean? <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta check the 23 and me exactly. after that and see if we can but uh, but bro, man, thank you for doing this, man. I appreciate this. Thank you for your transparency and just sharing with the Hustle fam. Yes, sir. Um, if you don't respect that, your whole perspective is whack, Hustle fam. You know what we do around this time. If you smell something burning, it is only your desire. Myself, Rashad Whitehead from High End Halls, we are out, out. my man. If you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb, this is the place to come. Truck and hustle. Let's go!